O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Welcome in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Today is Ash Wednesday, and we receive the imposition of ashes, that is, we get marked with the ashes on our foreheads or sometimes perhaps on our hands. Now you can do this wherever you are, but if you're at home, if you happen to have maybe a wood-burning fireplace, you might have some ashes and you could mix with a little bit of olive oil. Or if you have a, a potted plant, you could actually get some, just a little bit of soil and mix with water or, or with some, some oil. Or perhaps you have just some dust. And, and honestly, you don't even need any of those things. Perhaps you could just make the sign of the cross when we get to that point in the service. But first, we hear the word of God proclaimed. And we turn to the gospel of Joel in the Old Testament and hear this call to repentance and prayer. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. And then in the New Testament, we turn to Paul's letter to the Corinthians, urging us to be reconciled to God. Hear these words. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. On Ash Wednesday, we receive this imposition of ashes. That's the technical term, the liturgical term, the imposition of ashes. But it means we receive the mark of the cross made by ashes on our foreheads. And sometimes we offer our hands and have them have the cross marked on our hands. But when we receive the ashes, the words that we hear are, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. See, when humans were born, we hear this story in Genesis, the very first book of the Bible. It tells us about our beginning, and it says, The Lord our God formed man, and that word for man really means humans. The Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. We came from the dust of the ground. And when we die, we go out to the cemetery and we lower that casket down into the ground. And the preacher says, Almighty God, into your hands we commend your son or your daughter. Ensure in certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then this body we commit to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. These, these 40 days of Lent are a gracious time 
to humble ourselves, for we are dust before the Lord our God and Creator. And so the Apostle Paul, in this letter to the Corinthians, urges us to be reconciled to God through Jesus, to accept the grace of God, because this is an acceptable time. This is a moment of salvation. And Jesus gives us a picture of of what this looks like. He told a story to, well, some rather proud people who sort of trusted in themselves and, and in their righteousness, and they even regarded others with contempt sometimes. Jesus tells this story. He says, once there were two people who went up to the temple to pray. Now, one was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. And, and the, the proud Pharisee stood by himself, and he, and, he, and he prayed like this. Thanks, God, that I'm not a despicable person like other people, you know, like thieves and scoundrels and adulterers, and, well, especially like that tax collector over there. And it's true, you know, that Pharisee really was probably a good person. He didn't cheat or commit adultery. He probably fasted twice a week. He tithed, might have lived nine miles from the nearest source of sin, right? But, but now you get this other picture. The tax collector, the tax collector prayed. And when the tax collector prayed, he stood off at a distance. He kept his head down and he beat his chest in sorrow. He said, oh God, be merciful to me a sinner. Oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, you know who the tax collectors were? I mean, they were considered traitors. The tax collectors really were considered traitors to the Israelites. I mean, they were, they were Jewish people, but they worked for the Roman Empire, then collecting taxes from their own people, the Jews. And so the, the tax collectors, they worked for those dirty, rotten, stinking pig Romans that, that had conquered the Israelites and held the Israelites down under their thumb. These tax collectors weren't so much like the IRS that we might think of in in our country today. They were just more like the mafia. I mean, they had to collect the taxes that the Romans required, but they could also collect more than that and put that in their own pockets. And the Romans didn't really care as long as they got what they wanted out of it. And so these tax collectors, sometimes, often, they collected more than what was required. So tax collectors were considered traitors. They were considered thieves. But see, Jesus, he looks at the people and he says the most amazing thing. He says, it's this tax collector, not the good and righteous Pharisee, who went home in the right relationship with God. Why is that? Jesus says, for all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The question that we always have to answer is simply this. Are you you more like the tax collector or are you more like the Pharisee? These 40 days of Lent are a gracious time to humble ourselves, to be reconciled to God through Jesus, to accept the grace of God. This is an acceptable time. This moment right now is an acceptable time. It is a time for salvation. Remember that you are dust. And to dust you shall return. Now we're going to receive the imposition of ashes. And of course this is a little different than if we were in person when you would be able to come forward and and I could make the sign of the cross on your forehead or on your hand. But but again, you can do this. You can do this at at your home or wherever you are, if you're alone or if you're with others. I mean, if you're with others, you could take that opportunity to mark one another. I have some ashes that have been uh, burned from the, the palm leaves and mixed with oil. 
you likely don't have that, but you do have several options as I mentioned earlier. If you happen to have a fireplace and there's some ashes in there, don't mix that with water, that can burn your skin. But if you, you do have some ashes and you mix it with oil, that, that's a good thing. Or if you have a potted plant and you could get some, some dirt, some soil out of that, you could mix that with some water or, or oil or just some plain dust or none of that because you could just make the sign of the cross on your forehead. And as we do this, we will remember that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. If you have the opportunity, I invite you to mark yourself or others. Remember, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. According to God's steadfast love, according to God's abundant mercy in the grace of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you, you are forgiven. The peace of the Lord be with you. And now, I want to read for us the gospel we're reading in the gospel of Matthew about these practices of our faith that Jesus shares with us. Hear these words. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You are invited in the name of the Lord then to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, by reading and meditating on the Word of God. And I want to share some, some specific opportunities that, that we have for you. First, I want to encourage you to be a part of a small group. And because we're not in person yet, you're going to really have to be intentional about this and find a few friends or family members or neighbors or, or associates, colleagues, whatever that might be. You're going to need to be intentional about seeking out some people that you can meet with either safely in person or online and spend time together each week. This Christian conversation and prayer is essential for us as disciples of Jesus. Transformation and growth happens when we examine and reflect on how God is working in our lives. And we do have small group material that goes right along with our worship series in Lent and it's really wonderful, and I want to encourage you to, to contact us. We have it in the church office, and we'd love to share that with you. But be intentional about being a part of a small group. Also, I want to encourage you to, to read Scripture throughout Lent. And of course, we read Scripture every time we gather for, for worship, and uh, we do that in our small groups, but you can also do that individually as well. If you, if you need any help at all with a reading plan for Lent, just let me know. I'd love to help you. But an easy way to, to read scripture is just choose one of the gospels here. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Read one or two chapters each day. So, for instance, you could read the Gospel of Mark and, and even the Gospel of Luke all during Lent, reading one chapter a day. And if you have some sort of a, a Bible reading app on a device, a phone, or a tablet or something, there are many Bible reading plans there. Uh, YouVersion is an app that gets used very widely, lots and lots of Bible reading plans and devotions with that. And if you need any help with fasting, again, just let me know. I have quite a bit of information on my blog. We have that in the newsletter as well. But I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. Uh, there are many ways to fast. Sometimes it's not even about eating less food, but eating less often. But fasting is something that we are called to. In Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he doesn't say, you know, if you fast, then this. He says, when you fast. Not if you fast, but when you fast. I hope that you have a very powerful and wonderful and meaningful season of Lent as we work our way towards the wonderful and glorious moment of Easter. Now as we enter the season of Lent, I invite you to sing with us.